So hello again everyone, I'm Lee Berger, a paleoanthropologist at Vitz University and an explorer at large for National Geographic. I'm here at the 105 site today and I want to give you a tour of the major fossil deposits and, and why I'm so excited about this site and its potential. So let's take a look. So as you can see as I pan around this beautiful site, it's actually a collapsed cave system. There would have been, sometime in the distant past, a roof above this, which is now collapsed into the interior. Uh, in this area that we enter in at present, uh, there, the entire walls are actually made of fossiliferous breccia. There are plenty of exciting fossils in it, and it appears to be part of a large debris cone that heads down into the interior of the cave, and it's in this breccia that some of the exciting fossils are held. So you can see that the walls here are littered with fossils. This area here is a fossil, and you can see others that are exist in this area. Now, I'm up on the side of this cliff now, and I'll just look back down behind me. But this is somewhere near the top of the debris cone that flows downward into the cave system down below me. And so there once would have been an entrance up in the direction above my head into this cave system. One of the problems we face here at 105 is that probably in either late 19th or early 20th century, this site was heavily mined for lime, and the miners used a lot of dynamite. And that's created these destabilizing cracks that you see. And of course, these destabilize very large rocks that sit directly above where we are now um, using an entranceway, which makes it very dangerous. In fact, these rocks down here collapsed in the last minor earthquake that we had just a few weeks ago. And that's why we're going to be putting in uh, stairways in the back that lead directly into the chamber that we're most interested in. But of course, there's interesting stuff out here. There are, in fact, hominid fossils out here, and I'll show you one in just a moment. So many of the fossils in walls uh, are very promising for looking uh, like hominid fossils, and, and these are some here. Uh, these teeth that are here, they're just the roots of teeth, but you can see that they're very complex, like a primate. And in fact, I'm, I'm pretty certain that these are uh, two hominid teeth that are, are seen in the wall, which means that there's a potential that all these little flakes of bone and stuff in this area are in fact hominid as well. So we're not even on the inside of the cave yet, and there are nice potential uh, hominid fossils here. So as we enter the cave, you can see all of this collapsed debris, and this has come from the roof here above, this destabilized roof. And literally these blocks are all full of fossils. And at some stage, we're going to have to come in here and remove all of these to the laboratory and prepare them. But at least for most of these, we, we actually know where they come from. They come from directly uh, above my head. What's really exciting though in this area is as we enter the large chamber, you can see lights uh, in the distance from some of the sinkholes. But around this corner are still left some of the most important in situ deposits. And I'm just going to scan along these and almost all those white flecks you see are actually bones that are embedded uh, in this, uh, this breccia. What's nice about this wall is it's obviously in situ. It's been blasted open by miners, but it still has plenty of fossils in it. And all of these flow stones that you see, this that's that crystalline white uh, that you see here that both bound this area as well as are below this area, you can see, are going to be critical in the investigation of this cave because they are likely to allow us to date this deposit. As we leave this wall behind, we, we pass over to the right of this cave and we, we go down this narrow hallway that's formed by the collapse of this tremendous uh, rock onto the floor uh, from the ceiling. And that likely occurred when there were miners. And that's where we reach this very, very interesting dump. This dump is both the product of this material that's collapsed from the ceiling, as well as the remains of, of material that the miners 
actually left behind. And it's this little dump right here where uh, the second hominids were recovered from, and I'll take a look at those. But just to give you an idea where that daylight is coming in, uh, that's right below that shaft, and that will eventually be our entrance shaft. And it's just on the lower left-hand side where the first mandible was discovered. And what we now know is it's likely that that material came from this dump and then was moved to that pile of rocks which you see over there, which was actually likely a loading ramp. And there was a then some pro kind of rail or hoist system that the miners were using to get the white limestone out of this cave. So after we have taken all of this dump material out, it should expose much of what is in C2 and uh, where most of the bones come from. That allow our geologists to perform geochemical tests and uh, sediment tests and allow us to actually establish, hopefully, where the hominids are coming from. At the same time, one would hope that we would actually get uh, a large number of hominids out of that exercise, which will allow us simultaneously to work on the taxonomy of these fossils. That is, what are these fossils? What species of hominid are these fossils? You can see here how the miners built this large debris dump up, and it's likely that they had some sort of pulley system, what we call a cocoa pan rail system, that allowed them to take material they were finding from the interior of the cave and, and bring it out of, of this hole. Um, we'll, it'll also be interesting to see if we can find some of this material on the surface, although the miners didn't tend to take out material that had bone in it. They were after that pure, pristine white line that you see glittering sort of in the center of the shot here. And for those that are wondering, this is the exact location of where the first mandible was discovered, as I've mentioned before. There's the... Uh, um, uh, graffiti from Trimmer's Bloodline. So literally, those uh, people doing that were standing uh, on that mandible while they were doing that. To place it in context, those bright lights are sitting over the spot of where the second hominid remains are from. So you can see it's actually some considerable distance away. So that was just a brief tour of the cave. I'm going to be heading out now, but it gives you an idea of the job that's ahead of us, and it's not a little job. It's going to take months and months just to get all of this material out, but it holds great promise uh, for the future. Uh, it'll be exciting, and uh, we hope you join us from here, the 105 Expedition.